Thanks, uh, thanks to Taylor and the integrated team. And thank you guys for showing up on Sunday and giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, so I believe my the previous presenter from Centurion probably answered this question for you. And I share a lot of the same sentiment. Um, in our experiences as a developer, we're a little bit more in the weeds than, um, you know, in terms of negotiating with uh, with various municipalities on on how to get uh, on how to get our the density we want. So basically, how to make projects economical. And in our experience, and I'm basically saying this on behalf of the people who work in our company, who've been here for 15 years, uh, been working you know 15 to 25 years. Not as tall as Matt. <laughs> Um, is that um, you know it's it's a, it's been an uphill battle in Vancouver um, from a policy perspective. So that's kind of where we'll start the presentation. Um, I think I'm down up. Taylor, technical help. Oh, there we go. Okay, so our group um, we're forty we're forty seven years in existence. Uh, we've built over three thirty one thousand homes. Uh, we've had over 75 partnerships. Uh, our partnerships include groups like Oxford, uh, the, pen, the large pension. Uh, we've partnered with groups like Forge Stone, uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, UBS, um, across all of our, our various markets. Um, we typically, our, our business is typically to go in, buy the land, take it through entitlement, take on that three-year risk that Matt was talking about, and then bring in partners who can do, uh, who come in at the vertical development phase where, you know, projects ready, entitlement risk is removed. And then we bring those partners in and then they help us, we build a project for them and either deliver it to them in the institutional case, or we together sell the project. So we're what, we, what you'd call a merchant builder. Um, our founder is Joe Hussein. Um, many of you have skied on Joe's Hill, which is uh, Whistler. So he bought Whistler back in 1986 under the company IntraWest. And so IntraCorp was basically a company that got pulled out of IntraWest because when he went to take the company IntraWest public, they said, we don't want any urban development. We only want resort development in the company. And that was the best way to get the highest valuation. So he spun this company out and has had it professionally managed, I think, since 1994. And this is our management team in Vancouver, um, Don Forsgren. Don's been with the company since 94. Um, he's, our, uh, he's our chief executive officer. He looks after Vancouver and the other three markets. Uh, we have Evan Allegretto, who's our president here. He, does, he runs the day-to-day -day Vancouver business. Our chief investment officer looks after all the investments and how we, cap how we capitalize projects is Dan Miller. And then I work under Dan, focused primarily on Vancouver projects, but dabbling a little bit in our U.S. stuff. So Dave Steele taught me that uh, you always have to have a joke in your presentation. So here's my attempt at one. Um, so this is the amount of Vancouver chief city planners and the number of Vancouver Canucks coaches over the last 11, 13 years or 12, 11 years. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of turnover in both. And um, so this, this kind of leans into the crux of what our, we think our, the issue is with, is can Vancouver build enough build enough rental projects. So here's the, here's the crux of the issue, is that the federal, pol federal policy is focused on bringing immigrants in, so increasing supply, whereas the, sorry, increasing demand, whereas, the, whereas in the local municipal governments, inc incumbents don't want, they don't want density in their, in their local municipalities. So therefore there's always this, there's always this, increased supply or increased demand and restrict supply. That is the, in our view, that's the crux of the issue. So you're always, as a developer, you're always pushing against the municipalities to increase supply. And while they recognize that that's a problem, the incumbents that own the real estate are typically the people that are voting. And no one wants 140 units to a block or two from their house, right? So, change, so we especially notice this in Vancouver West and Vancouver East where you know where we're right now we're building quite a few projects is that the 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 time it took to get get our zoning in one case it took us 10 years and we're just in the process of developing that site today but we bought the site i believe in 2011 2012 and we started building like two months ago so here's 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 what's happened in vancouver so as you'll see here is that we've got 200, there's over the past 10 years, only 2,473 homes, wood frame and concrete purpose-built rental has been built in the past 10 years. 
And that's because it's been non-economically feasible to do that in Vancouver. And that's in con for sale condo has been the way to go and the way you make money as a developer. And so what you've what you've seen is you've got a massive, you've got a pretty decent gray market of people who like you and I who will go buy a unit and then rent it out. And you know, we're renting it out, but there's you know, there's no professional management around that property. So what you're starting to see now with the price of con condo prices coming down and rental rates going up is that it's now become a little bit more economically feasible to build to build wood purpose built wood frame. So, so what we're doing right now is we're focused on, we bought a bunch of, we bought a bunch of sites in 2021 that basic, that, that we have been working with the city and I'll get into what, what the, what they're, uh, what the city's been doing. But the short version is, is that we bought these sites with the intention of building them as wood frame rental, purpose built rental because of this exact statistic. So here's a couple slides on Vancouver population growth. Um, Similar to what Matt said, maybe I think some of our percentages are a little different, but similar trend. Um, sorry, oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, um, so, so anyway, so what we're seeing here is we're seeing a projection of, for example, with every year about sixty thousand of the five hundred thousand per year immigrants, they'll be they're joint they'll be coming to Vancouver. So. We'll see probably another 200,000 immigrants coming to Vancouver the next three years. And then, so this gives you a supply of our key markets and where we've, we're focusing our time today. Is we're focusing on West Vancouver and, or Vancouver West and Vancouver East. So just over the, over the Burrard Street Bridge and over the Granville Street Bridge. And right there, what, what, the, what the city has done, and we think this is one of the, one of the better policies that they've implemented, is they've, they've adapted what's called a secured rental policy. So what that does is that that secured rental policy is focused on arterial and subarterial areas where you can increase density. So when you're driving up, for example, Granville Street, you get past the named streets and start getting into the numbered streets. You'll notice a lot of development go or a lot more development going on, and that development is typically wood frame rental. And then you move move on on streets like Arbutus, um, Vine. And all these streets, uh, the the government has, or sorry, the municipality has designated as secured secured rent in the secured rental policy. So that allows you to build five story wood frame homes, um, and and uh, you know, and then you, as you move off these arterial streets, they lower the density. But it, what they're trying to do is they're trying to increase the amount of density that you have that that is available in these areas. So that that policy is always has pushback. And so what they did was they basically created a uniform. A uniform set of rules that if you follow these rules, it should take you six to nine months. I can tell you right now, it's not six to nine months, but we're going to get there. <laughs> um, there's also a number of they've instituted a number of other policies like the Broadway Plan, the Canby Corridor, which have had, you know, in our view, make it have made it very difficult to actually build or economically build. So some of the things they do is if you buy a building and you have to replace people, you have to pay for their rent for the next X amount of years. And then they get to move into the building once it's built at their, at their rent on some escalated basis, which makes, which doesn't make economic sense. But in the, this plan for us, the secured rental policy seems to be the most, most, I guess you'd say most logical of, of the various policies that the uh, uh, Vancouver municipality has implemented. So here's just a map of the policy of where the policy enacts. You'll see here you've got Vancouver West, Vancouver East, and here's just a, on you know on arterial five story five story residential apartments. If you go up to five stories and add you know increase increase into a story six stories, then you're at you have to provide twenty percent rent um, mark uh, below market. So we typically our business model is the financial the financial performer doesn't work. With the if you do six stories, you're basically just adding those floors for free. Um, so we just stick. We've been sticking with doing five story residential apartments, and then off arterial, you have a variety of different um, strategies that, or a variety of different um, forms of development that you can follow. So here's just a uh, wood frame versus concrete. We like wood frame right now because it's one, it's quicker to build. Um, Two, it's a little bit sec sick relative to the rents you can get in a concrete building in Vancouver these days versus what you can get in, in a wood frame. We think the economic, well, we know the economics work better in a wood frame. And generally, um, we just, you know, eat, uh, the only real impacts in our view are, you know, some, some things like sound transition, which you can mitigate against with, uh, with insulation. 
So here's some of our pro here's a list of our projects. If you're driving around East Vancouver East or Vancouver West, we've got uh, we've got a site up on Arbutus, which is 105,000 square feet. We're building about 150 units there. The same thing on Vine and West 41st, and then project uh, project East 33rd, which is a 110 unit five story project that we're actually looking at working with uh, with Taylor and his team on over the next over the next several months. And so these projects are all we we own the land. We're going we're going through public hearings over the net. We've either have been through public hearing or we're going through public hearings. And um, and yeah, and we're we'll be basically raising money once we're once we've taken out the taken out the uh, entitlement risk. So that's uh, that's us and my name and phone number. I think somewhat somewhat legible up there, but um, <laughs> it's. Um, yeah, anyways, you're going to get a copy of this and, uh, yeah, I'm happy to open up for questions.